higher level that there are a uh, few important differences. Now, this is also important to know. This would not compile. Why? Because there is a percent %d, and a d requires an integer. And greed is a string, so it fails to compile. The only bad thing is that this hack is not open to you as an application developer. They hacked it into the compiler itself. Um, <laughs> but um, there is a type which constructs given a literal string. By the way, on printf this must be a literal string. Um, if you want to make this formatting guide uh, non-literal, but a variable, you have to use the .NET console write function. Um, and there is a, a, a mechanism so that you can take a literal string and then get an argument list out of it, uh, which uh, requires these static types. But basically, you won't be able to do such tricks. Yeah. It's not perfect. Damn it. So, five minutes in tux. Hmm. Um, we make a comment. Uh, like in C sharp and C uh, 99 and C++. Um, okay. And there are these other comments, which, um, as you see on the, my hacked syntax highlighting here, actually goes until there and not until here. So it's better than the block uh, comment of uh, C sharp and the block comment of C and of C. And that's also nice. Also, um, if you if you would happen to open a string here, then it would actually be parsed as a string. Don't ask me why. It's just that way. So, but now back to the function. This function does something. It adds one to x. Um, yeah. That sounds nice. Um, as you see, let defines a variable, let defines a function. Um, it's like uh, define in team. Now, what would happen here actually? I, here I have add one x, x plus one, and add one, one point o. And anybody, any idea what could happen? 2.0 is the result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> um, I also expected it to be oh. 2.0, uh, but this expression was expected to have type int, but here was type float. F sharp <laughs> does not do any type of automatic data co uh, coercion. You have to upcast yourself, downcast yourself, cast from even to larger types, which is the, it's guaranteed that there can be no data truncation. You still have to do it manually. However, due to some language features, it's in reality usually not the problem. Now, five minute syntax. Yeah, that's the, uh, how you would make it for um, doubles. Either you have a point somewhere in your number. Um, yeah, and now you have an add one list, uh, which goes float to float. A uh, float in a sharp is a double float and not a single float. A single is a single float. Um, yeah, language characteristics. Uh, by the way, that was um, the most basic syntax. Is there uh, a thing like patterns or type polymorphisms? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, so can define add one for two um, types of types? Um, well, <laughs> uh, yes, you could write it. Okay. But um, you would, yeah, you would have to you have you would have to write this one. Here you would have, yeah, okay, this is now when I would like to have a keyboard. Um, <laughs> so it's not completely so easy? No, it is totally okay. easy. Oh, okay. It's just if I say a symbol here, symbol there, then it's not a good explanation. Sorry. Uh, maybe we'll, we will see it later. When we um, another question. Yeah? Um, if we, I take two variables, so let at one x epsilon uh, y <laughs> equals x plus y. Mm -hmm. So it actually works for floats as well as integers as long as they are the same type. Yes. Okay. This is called automatic generalization, yeah. um, which is supported by most um, functional programming languages, including F. -Rap. Yeah, well, because I knew this concept by OCaml, but they have special um, operators for float. 
Yes, Upload. this is uh, <laughs> one of the main differences. Operators in F sharp, um, which probably comes well sometimes a little bit design decision. On the other hand, also a little bit from their .NET heritage, operators can be overloaded. Okay. And um, yes, so and so this is the same plus for uh, doubles as floats as strings. In OCaml you would have different plus signs and so on. <laughs> but you can of course define different plus signs if you want to. <laughs> so uh, language characteristics. Now is that part. Um, where um, I at the beginning had 20 slides of theoretical language specific stuff and then I deleted them. And then I will, now I will show you just a few um, examples um, how a sharp works and so you get a feel uh, for functional programming languages. Uh, just a question. Who here does, uh, does know about functional programming languages and uses them themselves? Yes, yes, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, that's, that's good, of course. I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so, well, functional first. Why do I write functional first? Um, it is not a purely functional language, like OCaml. You have object orientation in there, too, and you have some metaprogramming in there. Um, but I say functional <coughs> first because it's the most convenient way to write a sharp code. So, this, of course, starts with everything is an expression, including the if. Um, which, for some reason, programming languages still get wrong today. And, yeah, this, um, you also see uh, the syntax, a comparison, is done through a single equal sign, not a double equal, like quite often in .NET, or Java or C Sharp. And also this then and else, well, just write it out. There is no other ternary operator, like a question mark a colon, that does not exist. So this is the usual form. Um, yeah. Then, yeah. first class functions, of course, functions can be values, functions can be passed around. Um, this is in the meantime, except for Java, this is um, normal. <laughs> and operators are functions too. So in just in case you wondered, this that here below, is actually doing the same as the depth uh, above there. It is adding a um, two point, uh, a floating point to to its argument, and it has the same type. Um, yeah. Currying. Um, yeah. If, if, okay. I uh, I think two people were here with uh, no functional background. So what is currying? Um, if we define add x, y, x plus y, okay, this by the way would now have the type um, a function which takes a generic type argument which is, uh, and which then projects um, two elements of that type to the other type. Um, later we will see how f sharp denotes these um, types. But here, okay, we have just a function that can add and then we define increment, let increment add one. And this is also called partial application. And what does it do? Um, increment is now a function which takes only one value and then when it gets this value, performs this add one plus the additional value. And yes, you call it like that in four and the result will be five. Um, yeah, um, partial application. Um, there is one thing that is important. Here you see um, so-called um, currying uh, function types. There are uh, tupled functions, and I forgot to provide uh, to prepare a slide for that. But what is we will later see what a tuple is. And just um, for the basic idea, all .NET member functions in um, .NET classes are tupled functions. So this convenient currying works for the f sharp function type, but you have to type a little bit more if you want to use currying for um, the tuple functions, because then you would have to uncurry them first, or you would have to write a lambda. Uh, a lambda, just uh, for those who don't know, it, a lambda is just a local uh, anonymous function. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, currying. 
of course, higher order functions. When uh, functions are values, we can pass them to other functions, and those other functions can work with functions. Um, one example. Okay, now we have subtract, and we would like to write a decrement function, but the problem uh, problem is, if you curry subtract one, then you would not sub uh, decrement the, your value, but you would say one minus the value you pass it. So now we make a swap arc. What does this do? It takes three arguments, f, x, y. f is a function, and x and y are just exchange. So um, what does this do? Um, this swap arc takes this function and stores uh, as, as partial application this x. This one is bound to the x. And then this decrement is a function which uh, still misses one um, argument, namely that y that we have uh, never bound here. And now when we invoke uh, decrement 4, then 4 is bound to y. Through the swap arc function we now execute sub, um, then first y, 4, and then 1, 4 minus 1. Okay, and it works and we have 3. So this would be an example of uh, higher order functions. You typically see them explained also with sorting. Um, you have a sort function, somebody has implemented a quick sort, a merge sort, I think that even exists in C through a function pointer line. Um, and then you give it a, a function which um, decides which of two elements is larger. Yeah. Uh, function composition. Well, now we see a few of the operators we saw at the first teaser slide. Um, yeah. What does this do? Um, this thing here is an operator, which is actually just a function, but it's uh, predefined in a sharp. It more or less means um, take, the, um, take the value on the left and apply it as the last value on the right of the, um, of the function expression that you have on the right side. So this more or less just exchanges the order in which you write um, your, um, your functions. You don't write function call with data, but you write data pipe into function. This is convenient if you have a processing pipeline where you say data, then pipe it to there, then pipe it to that, then do that with that, and then you can chain your filters through the data. Now, and what do we do here? Well, we have not, which is an operator and which well, negates a uh, boolean. And sequence.isEmpty is a function which takes a sequence and returns true if it is empty. Oh. Yeah, and what does this do? Um, this says function composition. If I remember correctly, it's point in Haskell or it's the, the other. What is the other direction of. Uh, I'm not writing Haskell that often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun function composition is point. That's correct. Okay, yeah. Well, and this is are, function. You mean, you mean uh, dollar? Yeah, really. There are, I think, uh, two different uh, uh, directions. Here we have function composition in a sharp with this double left arrow or with the double right arrow. And then, of course, in the other direction. In that case, we um, just, what would we do? List empty is a constant. It is an empty list. And this empty list is then piped to this function, and this function takes the empty list, and is empty returns for the empty list. Um, of course, true and not inverts it, and so we get false. Why is this convenient? I showed it you in uh, exactly that part where it is convenient. Uh, usually, you would now have uh, to write, if you would not have this composing operators, uh, lambda, which then you would write function x uh, arrow um, sequence uh, not sequence is empty of x. Then you have, you have to write more. Now you only to write uh, not is empty and you don't need to write the um, complicated syntax with the lambda. Yeah, also widely seen in functional programming languages. Functional programming languages usually are, usually are immutable by default. Um, in Pascal, everything is immutable, <coughs> and in F sharp, not. But uh, basically, um, values are immutable. Let's uh, like this here. They only introduce a new binding to A. 
that do not change the value A. As soon as you go out of the scope of the let binding, this is the reason why I use do here, so that we can 